Welcome back to another episode of The Banana Show, where we speak about everything mental health and self-help related. And today we're going to have our guest, Jack, who is a brand designer, graphic designer for our entrepreneurial series, our young business owner series to come on today and talk about his business and how he grew his business and stuff like that. Um, oh, you good. Welcome back to another episode of The Banana Show, where we speak about everything self-help and mental health related. Today, we are going to have our second episode of the Young Business Owner Series, and our guest Jack is going to come on and talk about how he grew his business from the start up. He is a graphic designer, and he will be on shortly to proceed with the interview remember to like subscribe and share and if you're listening from apple podcast leave a review so that i can reach many other people and if you'd like to be a part of the young entrepreneurial series you can just simply email me the email would be in the description box so without a further ado we're going to get into the interview So welcome, Jack, and I'd like to hear a little bit about your business. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, so my business is a graphic design uh, branding agency. Um, we're based in the UK, and um, basically I've, I decided I was going to set myself up as a freelance designer um, doing branding for small businesses to um, influencers that sort of thing and just doing the sort of the branding side of things there okay interesting how how did it start how did you get the idea that you wanted to start a graphic designing agency well i've always been involved in something creative from quite an early age my grandparents in particular were very good with their arts and crafts and and they mm -hmm. sort of showed me how to paint and um, my my granddad on on my dad's side he would use acrylic paints and so he would properly paint properly and he would show me how to draw and sketch and, and it, that's so, interesting yeah so I sort of grew up with people making stuff around me and then I think it was in in school I started doing my own radio um, and then sort of it sort of spiraled from there so it's sort of like all this creative stuff started to sort of filter into everything I was doing. So I started my own podcast. I started doing my own um, radio production. And then I, I needed to get graphics sort of side of things done. And so I sort of started picking up Photoshop and Illustrator and, and, and sort of spiraling into that um, in that way. And then eventually I ended up going to university and studying the, uh, web design and coming out and then becoming a full-time graphic designer. So that's where I've... That's, that's the history of like <laughs> everything I've done. That's interesting, actually. When, when you first started, like in university, did you find it difficult or because you had background, it was a bit easier for you? I wouldn't say it was easy. I think a lot of the, from my background, from me as a, as a person, I, I, I focused all my attention on Photoshop um now there's there's three different programs that all designers really know which is um indesign illustrator and photoshop now photoshop is great for what you're wanting to do for photo <laughs> editing and putting things together like you, you know putting together your cover up for your podcast or you know putting something on social media it's great for that but when it goes to actually putting things together that is then printed um it, it has a problem because photoshop uses pixels rather than vectors and it's a it's a whole different ball game there and i think one thing that i found really difficult was that transition from using one only program only and something that i've self-taught myself doing to then having to learn illustrator and vectors and and then using indesign and and now i'm fluent in all three which <laughs> is kind of helpful <laughs> so yeah it was um I wouldn't say it was an easy subject to sort of pick up because a lot of people had different, you know, it, it, it can be difficult to get the idea from your head onto the actual paper, if that makes sense. So, Like a creative yeah. mind. 
yes trust you me you can go I down understand. a spiral <laughs> yeah <laughs> i understand like when you want something to be a certain type of way and it's not you're seeing it in your head but it's not coming out how you want it to be so i know that can be frustrating so i mentioned that you mentioned that you had to teach yourself some of the things that you now know how did you gain the motivation or the discipline to continue or to full on teach yourself the skill well i i think it was just a case of just keep battling through i think a lot of it was <laughs> wanting to promote yourself on social media and trying to get attention to it's pretty much being attention seeking really um is to try and get attention towards a, a show that me and my friends were creating and so it was always trying to do something that's different and something that's new and and always trying to do all these little uh, tutorials and 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 trying to pick up from things because at the time you know, I think it was like 2013 2009 sort of era um it there was tutorials but they were all like premium tutorials so you had to pay for them um and so you, it was very rare to come across things so it's sort of yeah it, it it was difficult not gonna lie it was difficult but it's it's to keep to keep track it's just keeping yourself with notes and just saying this is what i want to achieve for the day and just sort of sticking to six things so for example i split my day into into three so i have three things that i need to do domestically for the flat i live in and then i have three things that i need to do as a commercial project for a business standpoint and then focusing on those and then you just hyper focus on those and then <laughs> that's how <laughs> that's how it works oh like you developed a, a routine or you set goals that you wanted to achieve that day and just full on base your attention on it yeah i mean it, it it's i'm trying to think now it's it's, it's <laughs> yeah it's just like that, that i i for me as a person that my whole way of working is all about schedules and and that's been instilled into me by my parents um my girlfriend she she hates it because she's had the opposite effect where none like sort of she's come from a very relaxed childhood oh. and it's sort of like very you know it when it comes it comes and it's a, it, and she comes from a childhood which i would have loved um very relaxed and laid back and you know very open whereas my parents are very stern and very like you will do this and you will do that and you will have to do this it's all very methodical and so with me i because i've been programmed for all these years to do it in that way i guess that's kind of how i started to like develop that strategy doing it that way because that's how my wine works so that's how i now do things it's not not for everyone <laughs> i do understand and sometimes we all need structure because even though i grew up in a in a in a mixture of both i feel like sometimes structure is good you know it gives you something to look forward or some kind of security about certain things hmm. so would you say that how you grew up has helped you to achieve certain goals that you wanted to achieve for your business yeah i, I mean in terms of how things were i i think the structure side of things and how i've constructed the routine and putting things in force and saying i've got to get up at this time and then i've got to work <laughs> until x amount of time and then this is what i'm going to do and sort of having these three things these three big things to then sort of achieve in the day that was all instilled by my parents i think one of the things that sort of really drives me as a person creatively is seeing the background from what my my girlfriend has come from and seeing the drive that you know she has to achieve what she wants to achieve and that sort of inspires me to then go on and then achieve and really push so we sort of work as a team me and oh. me and my girlfriend which is really it's, it's quite a it's a it's an interesting Do well. way of working it because we've both got different ways of of working and and you know she drives me to do you know make corrections and things and she hovers over me when i'm do, doing some design at home and sort of like going well this is where i'm going creatively with this what do you think and 
she's sort of like the bounce board yeah Anna. it's like <laughs> someone you can refer back to without any type of judgment but for your own betterment and forwardness yeah exactly and 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 it, and it works um it's developing it's definitely developing at the moment where it's sort of like evolving into a way of working that's a little bit better for both of us where you know but but she inspires me a lot with you know uh, put it this way I, I come from a, a quite a well-off family in 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 terms of like how it was structured and and she comes from a background that maybe not so um well off in that sense but they've got that family life of like we're all together we do things together you know we work through things together and that's really helped me as a person develop as a you know over the last four years we sort of de- I've developed into a different sort of person which sort of has both structures that you know sort of collide with each other so yeah it's a it's a good it's a good mix <laughs> that's that's really great to have somebody there that you can talk to and someone that really means you better which contributes to you and your overall betterment so that's really good yeah as for your business how how has it been going since covid yeah so i decided to be the brainiac um and decided to launch the business in october 2019 i decided to 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 leave the job that i had i had a full time job as a graphic designer um working for a local design agency doing all sorts of different things and i wanted to focus myself on a particular way of doing things so i wanted to focus on branding and i left to pursue that and then in the march uh, the uk was locked down in a, a mass lockdown and it i'm not going to lie it did suck because what i started to have that momentum of people were interested people knew that i was going freelance people were, you know were starting to contact me starting to ask me questions about things and then as soon as covid hit it's sort of like it all tapered out so I think I had about three, four months worth of work that just disappeared literally underneath my feet um, wow. within the first couple of months. So that was that was strange. But I guess, you know, with everything, you take it with a bit of a grain of salt because, you know, these things come around on very rare occasion. And it's a way of how you deal with that situation. So I spent a lot of my time developing as a person developing the structure of the business developing how the business is going to be and its focal point and where i'm going to focus uh because at the time when i first launched my business i said i was going to do everything i was going to do you know i was going to do branding i was going to do the booklets i was going to do everything i was doing in the agency but i was going to do that on my own and the problem with that that i found that's a lot yes yeah Uh, and the problem i found was I didn't love everything that I did and (laughs) I didn't realize I didn't love it until I actually started to really think about it. I sort of had that mantra of like, let's just copy paste their business model straight onto my business model because it works for them. I'm just going to copy and just see where it goes. It doesn't work out that way. It, it, It can do depending on what business you're doing. But for me, it, it didn't work for me because I didn't want to do printing. I didn't want to do all these different things that, you know, that annoyed me when I was at a design agency. So as a designer, it, it, when you're working in a design agency, you don't really have a choice of which projects you work with. There's very rare. It's very rare that you're going to have that choice. I mean, I've had contact with a lot of different other design agencies recently, which, um, which I've actually done some contract work with because of COVID. And that has helped me develop even more to see how they do things. And there was one that you could pick and choose which projects that you wanted to work with. And you could say no to um, certain projects, which I would say was a really strange way of working, but (laughs) it it worked for them. So yeah, it's it's a bit strange. It is COVID kind of really it really affected how everybody saw everything. And I think everybody got a bit depressed with like, you know, we can't do the things that we wanted to do. And it made you really reflect on everything that you do have. 
yeah and, yeah and and it's not just you know business wise but personally we you know i used to me and my my girlfriend used to spend a lot of money going to cinemas and going out and eating out and like every weekend we would just like blow a budget of just going out eating out doing things which is great but you know <laughs> eventually something's going to give and so you know we've learned to sort of evolve as people and sort of like Get do things a little like, bit differently and and yeah and that's helped that's really helped us as a you know as a as a group to to sort of push forward wow that's a lot to taking actually and during my time i've learned from a friend that sometimes we have passions that we like but in order to excel we have to understand that even though we like a particular thing we might not like everything about that particular thing like i like podcasting but trust me i do not like editing it is just so <laughs> time consuming and sometimes like if you are a perfectionist you tend to obsess over small details that nobody even cares about <laughs> oh yes oh yes uh, oh. i mean you know i've taken on because of the way that the world is at the moment i've taken on all sorts of different positions and positions i i thought i was i have the well i have and i, I still do kind of have that that thing which is i don't know if you're aware of it but a lot of designers have this big ego about themselves <laughs> they they think they're yeah. the best and at photographers everything. too I've yeah. seen it with the photographers, yeah. photographers. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah. Photographers. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's great. And everything works like that really well, but you know, you do have personality clashes. Like I I've had clashes with other designers in the past, which we wouldn't, we can't work creatively together because of how we, how we think of and how we see things. But individually in our own spaces we're, we're fine with we, you know you sort of get on with each other and i think what i'm trying to say here is like you know i i really looked at how and where i wanted to go as a designer and sort of really thought about it and the jobs that i took like i, I went back and did it like a job that a 16 year old would do so i was doing pot washing and and like in a kitchen in a kitchen environment in a busy cafe like washing out pots and things and being grilled by like sergeant major like <laughs> like a 17 year old and i'm i'm 26 you know it's like you know it's you know it's a it's a, a little bit different and that gave me a little bit more of a perspective of like okay you know i need to sort of like get out of this i'm the best structure and start developing myself as you know keep developing keep learning keep doing things and i think that's where it's starting to go also it's more of we getting back to the basics to kind of understand how things work and trying to eliminate our egos so that we can progress rather than creating this illusion that we are what we say we are exactly and <laughs> you know you could get in yourself in this huge bubble where you think that you're the best and then you just stop learning and yeah. that was a frame of mind that i was starting to get myself into where i was like i've got myself a job i was the first out of my university class to get a job i was the first to get into a position that i did it was in, in hindsight thinking about it it was literally handed to me on a on a silver platter um this designer was leaving i was going in and they had literally a week to find someone and i i popped up so i kind of got made into a position that i shouldn't have been fairly early on so i i left university and became a lead graphic designer for a design firm straight away which is kind of unheard of okay, okay. so it's a bit strange so so you skipped one process basically yeah. the process of sitting down with yourself and learning um your art and yeah. you and how you express yourself in your design and stuff exactly that's exactly what what happened and of course and that made this ego trip <laughs> out beyond belief and I, I and i can be sometimes i i the way it works and and you know covid has kind of helped with these conversations and started to, yeah. to make these conversations with family and friends and, and people like that and they've started to say like 
you know, do you feel emotion and, and, and things like that? And I'm like, well, I don't really think that I do. You know, it's sort of like those things that you start to debate in your own head, which you've never thought about debating before. And, and that's a good thing. That's always a positive thing because you're learning about yourself. The yeah, more you yeah. learn about yourself, the better you're going to be because, you know, I, I take them board. I'm egotistical. I, I can be <laughs> like the worst nightmare. If you let me, I will be your worst nightmare of, you know, this is how we're going to do things. This is where we're going to go. But if you stamp your foot down, I can be the nicest, like, okay, I can do that. I can try this. I can do that. I can be your yes man if you really wanted to. You know, and, you know, that's, I, I guess that's what I would have learnt if I had been under a, a lead designer beforehand. And I think I that's that. what I missed. I get that. It's like a nurse going in and straight after university, out of university, and then being told that, okay, she just has to do this right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it doesn't, it works sometimes. But, you know, being thrust into the deep end is kind of a, a You good have to thing. figure out certain things. Yeah. And, and, it, and you, you know, clients are expecting certain things and uh, expecting at a certain level. And when you don't have the skill or the knowledge yeah. um, to do that, it's, it's very difficult. And obviously, you've got to then smooth over the fact that you've just usurped a load of other people that may have wanted that position, uh, maybe higher you know have more skills or have been there for longer and you know and the only reason why you you kind of usurp them was purely because you know you were doing four you know you did the full week work rather than they did half half a week sort of thing and and that's a rather strange thing to sort of like you know look at but it's the way it went and i was happy for it <laughs> And it's ended up in the way that it's just, it's just bizarre how it's gone. I've always wanted to have my own business ever yeah. since I was young. I had that drive to, you know, and now it's sort of starting to come reality, which is very slowly, but it's getting there. <laughs> That's great. And I get everything. I get it, you know, and we have to try to approach things from more of a beginner's mind. Sometime we don't need to get up every day and tell ourselves that, we know we have to approach things like we don't know it even when we think we know so that we can get more knowledge and more experience and more out of what we are pursuing absolutely yeah yeah and so for covid or you mentioned earlier that you left your job to pursue your um graphic designing solo in 2019 um what made you make that decision or how did you know or feel that you were ready to do so? So, yeah. So, so the design agency I worked for was uh, a very laid back uh, design agency. It's the agency itself is, is great. It's structure is probably a lot better than it was when I was actually there. But when I joined, they, I joined when my former business that I was with, merged into that business so they so the business i joined actually bought <laughs> uh, the last business so i moved over with them and it's a, and so i was sort of like the smooth out process of like these clients are now merging in with this category of clients and and there was price differences and there's all these different things that were just you know way over my head of like structure and stuff oh i figured i was just thinking about that that maybe it's because of the structure and you being such a person that's used to structure you just decide okay i'm not going to deal with this yeah <laughs> and and it's also very important the lesson that i learned while there is it's very very important that when you build a team of people around you that they're all on the same idea because the problem with the business that I was with was that they had three directors all wanting three different things, wanted to go down three different avenues and it confused, it confuses the customer and it confuses other people. Then they had bought another company in. So there's another ideology oh, that was Lord coming into Jesus. the, into <laughs> the frame. And so we were used to doing things. So we were a traditional design agency. So the, the agency that we, I was with, was a traditional family run design agency. And we did work from all over the world doing all sorts of different stuff. We merged with this 
design agency who had just started doing design, but their forte or their front facing concept for their clients was they were a print shop that was starting to do design. And so there's a difference between the two, which is a print shop was very heavy with printing off different things like business cards and that sort of stuff. And then you've got that other structure, which is the design and the creative side of things. And normally it will be us sending work to the print shop to then get it printed and then it will come back to us and then we'll give it to the client. So it's a, it's a very odd process. So that, oh. so that transition between the two, so we had one director that wanted to keep hold of the old traditional we are a print shop this is what the business originally has been and fair play to him you know that is true that is the heritage of the business and you have to stay true to the heritage of the business as much as you can because you don't really want to mess up and annoy all your customers that you've built up for god knows how many years and then we had this new creative director who was very creative driven very design agency driven and wanted to create this London based design agency that was in the middle of Kent sort of thing. Um, a cheaper alternative to the London design agencies. And that clashed quite a bit with each other. And that made it very difficult to, to sort of work within because all these different ideologies were all coming in together. And so it was all a bit of a mismatch. So, for me, I felt like I didn't really fit in with the business. And so their ethos and their way of working was different to what I wanted to do. And so oh. that's where I sort of saw the divide. It's very, it's very difficult because you've got to kind of like see these red flags and you've always got this vision in your head where, you know, I, I was always told by my parents, like, get yourself a stable job, stay with it, stick it out, you know, and just stay there and just find another job and then just sort of float over to it and, you know, do the building and slowly, slowly that traditional, you know, <laughs> die hard. I, I don't know whether or not that's a British thing or, or it's just that instilled. Um, and I just couldn't, couldn't take it. Cause I was like, I did not want to do this sort of stuff and the business itself, and the duties that I took on was I was doing everything. So whereas before my original design agency I was with, I was just doing the design and I was talking to clients and I was sitting down with clients and then I was doing the design part and I didn't get involved with the pricing and payments and all that sort of boring stuff, admin. In this new job, I was doing everything. So I was getting the clients in, I was talking to them, I was giving them a budget for things. I was putting things together. I was pricing things out. I was doing the design work. I was proofing it off, getting it printed. I then went off and printed it myself. I then cut down the projects, put it away, put it in the boxes and then delivered it. So the entire process from start to finish was always conducted by me and no one else. And that was a way of working that I probably would have felt more comfortable with it once everything had smoothed over a little bit more. And, you know, and remember I was a bit more egotistical at that time. And, <laughs> you know, I'd been a lead designer in this design agency for two years. So I had that, you know, I had suddenly been usurped from that position to suddenly be working under a creative director all of a sudden. And I didn't, you know, oh, you know, all these positions more... were shifting and, you know, and so I was kind of like, in that position of like what what do i do you know you know i'm starting to go to school again about design which i should have had at the very beginning so i had like two years of this development phase which i actually had to sort of learn on my feet and then i was going back to school and it and i didn't like that and and it sort of like rubbed, rubbed me up the wrong way and yeah so yeah it was an interesting time let's just say that <laughs> i get it i understand it's more of I was thinking when you were talking, I was thinking of maybe your position did not align with the goals that you want to achieve. But then I realized because you're such a person of structure and the fact that you're going to have to, you feel like you're going to have to step back under somebody again when you're just getting used to your freedom, that can also cause you to want to leave as fast as possible. Yeah. And, and, you know, I was doing everything within the design agency and I did that for six months while I was there. And I just felt 
if I'm doing this now in a design agency and I'm doing absolutely everything and I'm pricing things out and I'm learning how the structure is and I'm learning all these different bits and pieces now and I'm like what's stopping me from doing it on my own because I now know all the structure of how to run the business all I need to do now is just leapfrog off and 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 start doing my own thing and so that's what I started doing and I was doing I was doing a bit of my own stuff my own design bits in the background so every evening I would come home from working you know a six hour shift come home so I was doing nine to five come home I would get straight on my pc and then start working on my own business developing it putting things out there starting to talk to different people trying to get that business flowing and yeah in October I just had enough and that's it I threw in the <laughs> towel and I threw in the towel probably a little bit too early um not gonna lie and then I decided I was gonna do contract work instead so I decided that I'm not just gonna be a designer I'm doing freelance but I'm gonna do these contract work and just experience that so the way it works in in in, in business I'd, you know it's different cultures have different ways of doing things but you know there's like full-time workers there's the part-time workers that are all employed and, and like you know they do their own thing and it's all run by the businesses and then you then got this contract work which is like, like this gray area um which is you're employed by the the company but you sort of do your own thing so you're freelance for that design agency but you're on a contracted basis so you're only there for a couple of months and then you move on to the next one and the reason why I took on contracted work is because I wanted to get more experience than being in just one design agency so I hadn't tried being in-house and I hadn't tried working for a single company doing a single thing and so I just sort of went from one to the other to the other and then just sort of experienced everything. I was trying to absorb everything. I went into that learning frame of mind and just sort of went, you know what, you know, I've been schooled in the last place. <laughs> maybe, maybe they are right a little bit with what they're saying. And I decided to throw myself into the fire and just go, right, I'm going to do this this time, stick it out for six, seven weeks, see what it goes. If I don't like that, then I'll try a different contract, go a different route and, I started sort of like leveling all these projects out and then COVID hit. And then of course, because I'm contracted, I wasn't classed as self-employed and I wasn't classed as employed. So then I was sat in the middle, which meant that I didn't get any help from government support or anything like that. Cause it oh was that, it's God. that unspoken. Unknown. Area. Yeah. That's, oh, <laughs> that's a lot. Um, when, all right, before COVID hit and you left, right, did you have any fear of leaving or it is a case where you just left and say anything is anything? Well, yeah, I, 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 I wanted to sort of have a little bit of a break from doing design because I think a lot of, I had done a lot of work in the original agency and then I did a lot of work to smooth over the transition of one business to another. And there was a week of time where this design agency, like, like the design agency that was bought actually operated with inside the new company as a separate identity. And the people that would have been the head. So the boss that I had and, and the admin people, they weren't coming over with the company. So they were gone. They were, you know, they were off. And so all the responsibility laid with me so these clients were calling up and, and phoning up about different all sorts of different projects all asking to speak to me and and trying That's to figure confusing. out what <laughs> yeah so so there I, I yeah i don't understand why it was agreed that way but i've got a feeling it was my previous boss that put that term in there but we had that overlap of one week where all of the equipment from one business was actually in the new business but that equipment wasn't officially owned by that new business. And we couldn't call ourselves the new business name until that week had passed. So there was two companies operating from one building. And so, That's so it, confusing. So then I was working on just the, the first company's 
stuff and I wasn't allowed to touch the new company's stuff. And so we sort of like trying to share printers. And obviously we had a print, we had a print room in the previous place and some of that equipment was moved over and there was lots of stuff. There was lots of little issues where like we plugged it in and, you know, kind of set fire to the printer and we had a little bit of fun with that, but you know, <laughs> you know, you know how it is. It's, it's like a 30 year old company, you know, the printer has never moved in, in, you know, 20, 15 years plug it yeah. into a new plug socket it's got a new you know amount so, of yeah. electricity i guess <laughs> yeah and it's like oh no let's not do that <laughs> different room it was a it came from a cold room into a warm room and it didn't oh like that. wow so it was sort of like you know I yeah so it, it was it was definitely interesting it was um definitely something to that I appreciate that I've learned and appreciate the people that I worked with. And, you know, I have more respect for them now than I did at the time. Um, but yeah, it, you know, it was one of those decisions that I made. It was one of those cutthroat decisions. I was like, <laughs> you know what, I'm just going to do it. You know, I'm just going to throw myself into fire. I'm doing dabbling this, you know, with my handful of five or six clients that, I've got, and I, you know, I got all these offers from all these different people and I'm just going to, you know, go for it. And at the time, the previous business that I was with was with a, a, a international business group called BNI. And what they do there is they basically have a, a number of different businesses from each chapter. So each chapter is designated by each city or, or town or residence, and they all come together and it's a single business from each category comes together and they block out the competition in that room so you've got 60 70 people of all different businesses that you sit in and we were the design and print agency within that area and we we would sit down and and, and we would talk and we'd discuss it and when we moved over to the new company um we had a disagreement over the fact that uh, they didn't want they didn't want to be a part of BNI anymore and they wanted to leave. And when they left, it cleared an opening. And so when I left, they invited me to come along as a designer to sort of come into the fray and, you know, sort of have a little, have, have a little look. And um, yeah, it, it was, it was good. It was a good time at the time, you know, lots of different people were saying, you know, they wanted to work with you and then sort of started to, pile it all up and then I had it all scheduled and planned and then COVID hit <laughs> which oh, then wow. reverted it all back to square one so how did you <laughs> how did you understanding that COVID is rough actually how did you manage to still stay afloat with your business and your mindset to push because sometimes business in itself is a structure but if you don't have the mindset to keep up that can also cause damages as well. So how did you keep your mindset up to keep on pushing with your business? If I'm honest with you, I wasn't the greatest during that period because I'm constantly battling with my mind of whether or not I should do it or shouldn't do it or whether or not it was a waste of time or, you know, trying to push through that barrier because, you know, I'm, at, I'm in a position now, let's put it, to, to how it is now I'll, i'm in a position right this second where if i had had the opportunity of last year with the, the momentum that i had picked up from the last business my business would be pretty well established right now whereas right this second i'm having to start from square one again but this time i don't have the overall helping structure that i did have at the very beginning um it's almost like it's an omen or so um telling me not to do the thing but you know, I'm, I'm determined. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if I'm honest with you, I had mentors, I had different people that was helping me out. I had seeked out friends. I seeked out family, family were very, very important with me. Um, my, my girlfriend who, you know, was the only person that was living with me at the time still is. Um, we both had a heart to heart over things because it also affected her because she was doing her final year of university and everything was going up in the air and, you know, 
she was having lessons taught online and teachers weren't turning up and you know oh people my. didn't realize things and all these different things that were happening all the time so she was in the real stressful situation everyone then, was just stressed out <laughs> yeah yeah and then and then we started to dig our way out of it in probably about october november time last year and then the landlords of our previous property decided to give us an early christmas present by kicking us out of our flat so <laughs> which oh, is the wow. way it works isn't it so you know when you're when you're renting it's it, it's a it's a difficult thing to battle so you you like so I've, I've started up my own business i'm i'm trying my heart and soul into this business just sort of trying to establish it you know both me and my girlfriend were battling with things and then we then lost our home so then we were then starting to have to look for our home and yeah it was it was very stressful it's a lot and, it's a lot yeah and so that resulted in me deciding to you know can some of my ideas and to really refine it while I was doing mediocre tasks so I went back to doing pot washing and, and I went back to doing you know stuff in um, bars because they were open still at that time um, and just sort of doing that you know the I wouldn't say it's the boring stuff but it, it <laughs> The, the basic stuff at the very beginning and so I have a whole new respect for those people that are in those positions that are in the supermarkets that are trying to establish themselves again and trying to build themselves back up again and trying to do their business again and are feeling like they're not worthy of anything because they're working a part-time shift at Tesco's or Sainsbury's or, or you, you know these supermarkets there's nothing wrong with it obviously because you know everybody has these hard times and you know you you need money to get you know anything going and so i had a real big battle over with with my mental state you know i went through a, a phase where i had been this you know high flyer as it were and i went from having everything having money having a car having all these different things and and, and everything was going for me to all of a sudden having all of that been taken Kicking away, away. And, and debating whether or not we should have heating on or whether or not we should go and get butter or debating whether or not we should have butter or we should have bread or you know debating how much money we've got in the account or you know really like fine-tuning the expenses and you know trying to share a, a can of beans between two of you you can but we had this half can beans that we're trying to divide up between the two of us and it was it was difficult and you know that's, and that that's that, that does teach you though it does teach you and i get that now whereas before i didn't and i have a whole new respect for how other people live and the way things work so i thank it really so in a way if covid had never happened i would never have learned the structure that i would have learned never would have done the things that i would have done Trust never would me, have I had that. yeah and never would have really understood what mental health really is. is because i never really had that until everything was taken away and basically it broke me and wow yeah, you really learn who your friends are at that stage That's when all, yeah. when, when everything when you is don't breaking have anything. around. Yeah, and then, you, you know, and uh, at the time I had a, a lot of friends that I would go out and see, and then as soon as stuff was starting to happen and starting to sort of fracture and fray, these people started to disappear, and so now I'm left with a, a streamlined structure of people that are actually very supportive, who want the same the thing best as what for I'm you. wanting. And yeah, and so, yeah, this is sort of like the rebuild of like, you know, guesting on different people's podcasts, seeing how other people are doing things and sort of like having a conversation like this. And yeah. <laughs> being relaxed about it. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. And wow, that's a lot. And you're still standing after going through all of that. Oh, yes. More determined than ever. <laughs> yeah. So it, it kind of gives you a different, uh, it allows you to see people, not how society see people. Mm. But because you have walked in their shoes or a shoe similar to them, you know, understand why they have to do these types of jobs, why they do, might not have it and stuff like that. 
I don't oh, have yeah. that experience. I, yeah. I, it's very eye opening. And I know I came to talk about business growth and all of that. I know it just turned <laughs> into a mental health session. But I am completely fine with that. But I, because... I think, I, yeah, I, I think when you when you decide that you're going to do your own business, though, this is this is the one thing that I've learned over time is it's a huge mental strain that I never even predicted when I first started. And, you know, anyone that's wanted to do the business is probably listening to this and sort of thinking, oh, maybe, maybe I won't do it just yet. Maybe I will wait a little while, but honestly, you're going to have these problems wherever you go, whenever you go. So it's always a case of like, just chuck yourself out there and really push yourself because figure it out yeah and it and it works you know you're doing a podcast you know yeah would you have decided to do a podcast had I other went, things in your life affected you or i i probably wouldn't because i've i've gone through so much and i think it's what basically pushed me to do the podcast and just you know go ahead first into it so I feel like what I've gone through has pushed me to do what I am meant to do right now. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I do see it's difficult though. And I mean, going through it, I did not like it. Nobody likes to struggle, but I guess when it's all over, you, you understand why it needed to happen. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You have that newfound respect for everything that you've gone through and you know everything is a learning everything is a lesson it's like how you see it you know i used to be like okay today i'm going to do all these different things i used to really punish myself when i didn't yeah, do you, those you need things to be kind to you know? yourself and i would sit there and i'll go right you did say you're going to do this today and i would sit and i would work until three four in the morning and i'll be super tired in the next morning i'll wake up and, and I'll go not to be and... able to do anymore yeah exactly and now i'm sort of more of a laid back approach of doing things where it's sort of like you know i am going to do these things but you know it doesn't have to happen right this second but it's you know i i've now got a structure where i've written down a list of like what do i need to achieve to get to where i want to be you know let's have instead of having these huge great leaps (laughs) let's do these little tiny leaps in a day that then help towards that bigger leap and that structure is working a lot better than, you know, how everything else is. Now, being bear in mind that, you know, businesses have that different flexibility where, you know, clients, especially for me, being a service uh, business, clients will come in at any point of the day and say, we're happy to start doing this project. You probably forget completely what that project was and have to go through your notes and sort of really think about how you know how how it was structured and how it was how it was working but yeah it, it's it's a learning curve everything's a learning curve um with whatever you do and you know it's it's great fun i i find it fun i enjoy it I, i'm sure sometimes you enjoy it's doing... difficult but i do enjoy like when i am um, i'm a very curious person so i'm always learning things mm. so yeah um what are some obstacles that you are you know that some people would encounter when they start a business and what is your advice to those obstacles so so for a service business it's the biggest one would be the pricing pricing yourself correctly it's probably one of the biggest fundamentals and the biggest learning curves that i've had to undergo the reason why I say pricing yourself is because you can really price yourself really low in the market that you're in. And then you start to get yourself, you start to get loads and loads of clients come in through the door and loads of people want to get your services. And, and you think there's loads of money coming in because lots of people are working with you. But the reality is that the money that you are earning for those jobs aren't sustainable for you to actually live. Off yeah. of. So <laughs> So yeah, the one thing that that I would me, that's... always take away is always, always figure out how much it is for you per hour to do the thing that you're doing. So that is including your power bill, 
that includes your your tax if you've got tax on your building the, you know your rent all that sort of stuff all of that goes into into play that's a production cost put that together and put that into a bracket margin so what's your minimum bracket that you've got to do obviously times it by a certain percentage so that you always make a profit but put it at at that rate and then never go below that that, that bracket that, margin that definitely resonates with me because i have a side business or a side hustle where i do locks right and sometimes i feel like i genuinely do feel guilty when i have to tell people this is five thousand dollars or whatever because sometimes the people that i am working with are young people and they can't really afford certain things especially in the, if they're in a certain space but i'm thinking that it's not a matter of if i feel guilty or not i have to charge you this because i need to i travel to them the travel needs to be included in there i need to eat absolutely because i have to stand on my foot to do your hair and i have to eat i have to provide and i have to go back home so it's yeah. not that I want to charge you this much, but it's because I have to get to you. And some of them really live far. And you have to mm. take like three to four buses to get to them. So yeah, th so it's all, it's all well. of these things that you've got to think about. And, 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 you know, a lot of things that when people are saying to me about, you know, why do you charge so much? You know, yeah, so I'm, it, I'm in, in terms of prices wise in, if you're looking at us dollars it's sort of like 80 80 80 dollars an hour is what i'm sitting at um and that's fairly cheap for a, a designer in the space that i'm in um oh. people so, just don't want to pay because they believe that what you are doing is not enough and that they can do it too. Unless they're in your shoes, they won't exactly understand, which is why they always want to underpay photographers and people like that, not understanding that these equipment costs a lot of money. Yes. See, the thing is, a lot of people have this ideology of like, it, it, it stems from school. And I, I have a strong idea about this, where it stems from the schooling. Schools especially in the UK and across the world, always underpay the people that are doing the creative fields. And the reason why I yeah, say that's that true. is because those fields are seen, seen by the, the international stage as less important than um, like careers anything like else. doctors and nurse and lawyer and all of that. Yeah. And there was actually recently during the COVID, in fact, there was a, a government initiative over here in the UK where they would put out these flyers saying you should start to retrain and become something different. You know, this person was this and now is doing something else. Like it used to be a ballerina. Now, now she's doing accounting, you know, these sorts of things. And they then made a list. There was a, there was a newspaper article. I don't know where the article was and they listed graphic design as one of the least important jobs in the world. But the irony of that was the newspaper was designed by a graphic designer. It was published by a printer. It was put That's together true. by yeah. a photographer and all these creative people were like, hang on a minute, we should all just go on strike and it would just be a blank piece of paper that they're just going to be folding up themselves. Exactly. Because you know that's that's what they were sort of saying and and that's you crazy know, and it and i and i really think it stems from the schooling where you know schools all always underpaid or or it was less important for you to do art but it was more important for you to do science and maths and and english and all these sorts of things and that's all really really important but you know some people have different ways of working and especially Learning. for me the way that i like to do things is i'm very creative in that aspect i'm not very you know i i, I love school i love you know science and i love <laughs> space and i love all these different things i love history and love all these different things i've got pointless information in my head but that's not going to help me get a career what helps me get a career is the fact that you know i like to create and make things and that changes how you know how i structure things how i do things and how i go forward and so I think if, if schools were to put, you know, they're, they're saying now that ICT is now starting to become, you know, the big four 
which you've got to have IT skills and English and maths and, and, and science skills as, as a GCSE, which is like a, um, a 16, 17 year old like education level of leaving school. That's what they should have. And I really think that something like art or something like graphic design or something like that should be on there as well, because you never and know. And music people, too. And music too. And music and music, because, you know, although some people see it as a, just an outlet, a lot of the population, especially the people that I work with, see it as a hobby. And when you see something as a hobby, you see it as free or I'm not going to pay you or I'm not going to do this in, in the way that you want me to do it. And that could be very problematic. Yeah. So for me as a service, you know, there, there could be, you know, there could be a locksmith who could go to a job and they've got set prices for things saying, you know, a lot costs X amount of money and this is how much it's going to cost you to buy that lock in. And then this is how much it's going to be hourly for me to fit that lock. Whereas for me as a design business, it's a little bit different because they don't see all this physical structure being put together. You go, well, I'm going to be spending X amount of time do, developing the typefaces and I'm going to spend X amount of time developing the structure of the shape. And then I'm going to spend X amount of time developing the colors and, and looking at how, how it's all structured. And then I'm going to put together a brand style guide so that you, you know the structure of how your flow of your business idea looks. And, and that's where you lose people because they if you're not creative you don't know and that yeah. is painful because then you happen to then explain and then you're you're trying to teach them but you don't want to be patronizing to teach them yeah. in the same case so yeah that it it's difficult it's definitely difficult but you know it's the way things are at the moment and you know maybe things will change in the future we don't know i get that and that is understandable um a lot to take in and i see it happen i see it when they want to undercharge photographers and all that thing but they expect quality work and they want to pay a little to nothing for it that's not it's not fair but yeah. you know i'm going to wrap up before the recording cuts off okay so thank you a lot for coming i really did enjoy this interview um there's a lot i've learned and one of the most important takeaways for me was that you have to go through some hard times to appreciate where you are at right now and see that it's necessary to get there and that it's going to be hard but if you really want it you can have it and that the mental health is important as usual you know um but i did gain quite a perspective from you and i'm sure that my listeners did as well well thank you very much for having me yes and i'd hope you come back on the future so tell us about your business and how it's going sure yeah so i'll see you later bye bye Thank you guys for listening to the podcast. I hope that you're able to gain a perspective or a different perspective on mental health and business. And remember to like, subscribe and share and leave a comment in the upper podcast section or wherever you listen to podcasts. I will see you guys in the other episode. Until then, keep on keeping on. Thank you.